Welcome back to Switch Up, I'm Mark Walker, thanks to 2K, and here is our review of Civilization 6 on Nintendo Switch. <sighs> I managed to avoid the lore of Civilization for so many years. It was eventually the excellent Civilization revolution on mobile, believe it or not, that got me kicking and screaming back into the series. As a huge strategy fan, I'm usually playing Total War on PC. The idea of a fully fledged Civilization game on a Nintendo device almost seems like a paradox my brain can't handle. In a series that literally spans decades and with enough content in each game to do the same, how does it fare on Nintendo Switch? Let's find out. I'm going to do my very best to get as much in as possible, but these games, as you will know, are absolutely rammed. Many thought that the game was being bought to Switch primarily because of the touch screen. Having been released on iPad, this made some sense. I had a sneaking suspicion they would revamp the rest of the controls for desktop mode, and that, thankfully, is exactly what they've done. The left stick acts as a mouse while the right moves the entire field of view. Clicking the right stick will bring your cursor to the middle of the screen, while pressing left again will instantly take you back to where you left the pointer. In practice, it is a very elegant solution to the control problems that have plagued these types of multi-button mouse and keyboard experiences. Dogs. The bumpers are used as quick menu buttons, within which you can navigate using your D-pad buttons. Selection of troops happens using the A button, and once selected, you generally use the D-pad to select embedded menus. It all works very well indeed. I particularly liked that when units are in town, pressing up on the D-pad will enable control of those. If you have other troops and want to quickly jump to them, you can click the right stick or trigger to bring up a quick menu of your active units and then jump straight to those. Touchscreen controls work well. If you're familiar with the iPad versions, you'll have some idea of what to expect here, and swiping around or pinching to zoom just feels right. Having not played that version, I can tell you that learning the docked controls takes around 5 to 10 minutes, and with split Joy-Cons, sat Grandad style in my rocking chair, it felt perfect. For players used to real-time or semi-real-time strategy, I'm going to do my best to introduce you to one of the largest strategy experiences on any platform, but also one of the cleanest and simplest available. The first port of call will most likely be a new game, controlling a budding civilization with a famous leader of your choice beginning at a very early level of technological advancement. With units available and little in the way of income, you must raise a people who will reflect your own drives. For me, I wanted to raise an empire of Spartan-like warriors. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm a teacher. <clears throat> to this end, as I spent cash building troops and clearing out local bandits, I tailored my governmental choices to create a people who were both highly religious, but also warriors. These choices can be altered as you progress, but there is a leveling that takes place that means they will drastically alter the history you weave. As your city grows, you can add civic buildings to boost income, housing, and trade, etc. Many wonders of the world will become available to you. The amount of time these take to build is shown here. If you select another building option, the previous will be placed on hold until you finish it. As your citizenship grows, so you are given more civilians here. You place these around the many tiles within your reach of influence. They serve to bolster and use the resources you have found. As you progress, your discoveries and choices will shape the look of your cities. It's great watching them gradually shift to match the routes you've chosen. By creating builders, you can cultivate the land in these and further increase the revenue, and as a result, the growth of both city and leader. Scouts are sent to essentially spy and can be used in some combat. Traders can forge new routes with other cities, creating roads which allow for accelerated movement. Pressing the L trigger will bring up the currently researched areas in three different categories. Here you can also alter the current learning that's taking place. Be careful as these are hugely important and they will allow the building of new buildings or units. What makes civilization so enthralling is the wealth of historically accurate information and routes you can take. Selecting a governmental style becomes a 10 minute googling session where I learned so much about the different methods of government throughout history. 
each with its own pros and cons. I settled on a style which suited my desire to create a new warrior race, and then let that have its silent but potent effect on several systems in place. Making friends or enemies is simple. Simply click on a newly discovered people and select the many options to either win them over or, as subtly as possible, subvert them. Outright attacks on neutral factions will lead to penalties that can be avoided if you're a little more sneaky. Troop management is another area that works surprisingly well on Switch. Selection with A or a tap is easy. Where do you want them to go? Press A again and they'll set off. If it's going to take several turns, then this is shown by a number beside the route. Regardless of allegiance, there will be enemies. These initially come in the form of barbarian tribes who are only out for your blood. Combat is decided by your own force's power in relation to the enemy and a statistical score is given and a chance of success. Now, for veterans of real-time strategy, this can seem a little shallow at first. When you realize that terrain, elevation, and surroundings all affect this, and that using archers to rain arrows out of range is still a viable option, things then become much more engaging. As technological advancements are unlocked and you inevitably start to use modern weaponry, then this changes even further. The real takeaway from the gameplay and controls, particularly for a new player to the series, is just how intricate the game is, while being so delightfully simple. You know the big public swimming pools where it gets deeper the further you walk in? Civilization VI is like that, except it doesn't seem to have an end. Whether you spend a few moments managing minute faction statistics, learning about the relics you've found, or launching surprise attacks, or just trying to bribe a potential ally before marching an entire army across his lands, only to attack him where he's weakest. Civilization VI provides you an avenue. Win by having the most incredible culture with wonders galore by dominating everyone you meet, convert everyone to your religion, launch satellites and achieve scientific domination, or simply win by having the highest score. Choices, 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 and they all feel like your own. Goals are given to you as well, and the tutorial system in place can be as heavy or as light as you want, based on your past experience of the series. It has been a great month for excellent ports on Switch, and from a gameplay and control standpoint, Pinching and zooming in handheld or panning the camera with a set of split Joy-Cons feels natural and even elegant. Gameplay is excellent, really excellent. Packed with content options, learning and choice and the new control system work really well. Meaning that we will likely see a PS4 or Xbox version soon. Gameplay scores 19 out of 20 and controls 19 out of 20. Christopher Tim has become a household name in the gaming industry, mostly due to his excellent work in the Civilization series. The soundtrack is on point. From relaxing yet thematic tunes, to exhilarating and tense ones. Troop sounds are good and the small animations for combat are a nice touch in a turn-based game. Visually, the Switch has done a decent enough job. While the visuals are quite easy from a graphical standpoint, there's a great deal of computation going on behind the scenes. For the most part, the game runs really well, surprisingly so in fact. In handheld, it definitely feels like a few frames are lost, but still is more than playable for a game of this nature. Docked was where I spent the vast majority of my time and everything seemed flawless. Now, I have heard some have had experiences of some crashes and bugs, but after six and a half hours docked play, I didn't experience a single glitch or bug. None whatsoever. The character models are decent and have a certain aesthetic that I'm not a huge fan of, but the landscapes and terrain look good and there is enough detail to be able to notice your city improving and farms and other area upgrades as they're built. Audio scores 19 out of 20, it's excellent, and visuals are just very good and they score 18 out of 20. The game retails at £44.99 in the UK and $59.99 in the US. When a game is full priced, it usually 
has to be the absolute fullest experience. While many of the extra packs are released at launch, we aren't getting the Rise and Fall expansion here, which is a shame. That being said, this is an absolutely massive game. There's more than enough to keep any strategy fan engaged, and it runs so well on Switch, which is a massive win for Nintendo. With shorter scenarios available plus a range of win conditions, I wholeheartedly recommend this. As a PC gamer as well, I can tell you that it took me around 10 minutes to totally forget I was controlling this with two Joy-Con, which is a testament once again to the excellent work the developers are putting into the control systems. Multiplayer is a little bit more of a letdown. With no online multiplayer in sight, it's a real shame and also I was expecting the hot seating multiplayer to be here but it doesn't seem to be just yet. And it would have been excellent to see this but it wouldn't stop me from buying the game in any way shape or form. If you're someone who tends to play online though then I would suggest you knock a couple of points off the value score. For me though value is exceptional and scores 19 out of 20. Well there you have it. First Diablo rocks up all cocky on Switch and proves not only to be a great port but potentially one of the easiest versions of the game to control and play, and now this, a full-blown Civilization 6 game on Nintendo Switch. What a great time to be a gamer. It scores 93%. A gigantic thank you to 2K for trusting us with your game before launch. It's a real honor. If you've enjoyed the review, let us know, and for all things Switch all the time, keep your Switch up. See ya!